Our U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria coming under attack 92 times since mid-October. And today, lawmakers will be briefed on the very real threat we face from Iran and its proxies. We've had over 90 attacks on our troops in Iraq and uh, Syria uh, from Iran-backed militias. And for the most part, that's gone without any response. The United States military is not authorized by Congress to attack Iran in the, the, the country of Iran. Uh, we can uh, respond in self-defense when they attack our troops. We have to show strength deterrence to get them to uh, stop being so provocative uh, in the region. Dr. Piruz Danish Gary is a former political prisoner in Iran who will speak to lawmakers at that briefing today, and he joins me now. Doctor, what's the main point you want to drive home in your comments today? Good morning, Todd. Uh, the main point is that this regime stands on two legs. One is killing and suppression of his internal uh, people, Iranian people, like myself and my family. I was in jail, tortured severely. And the second leg is the terrorism outside his, uh, his borders. I learned this morning that this regime has set up a sham court uh, to do an in absentia trial for 104 leaders of the leading opposition group, the Mujahideen Khalq Iran, MEK, uh, to take him to trial. And I'm a biologist. Let me tell you, based on what I had seen uh, four decades ago in the jails and throughout the four decades ago, this regime is looking for a justification to increase its terroristic attacks outside its borders on Iranian citizens. A number of this group, about 900 of opposition leaders, are in Albania in Ashraf, a camp called Ashraf 3. And I think this regime is looking to hijack our court system and our legal system to justify its attacks on uh, its opponents and in opposition outside, uh, outside Iran. And frankly, as an American citizen, that makes me very safe, unsafe. And uh, let, me, let me interrupt you for the, a second, doctor. Yeah. I've known since I was a child growing up in the 80s that Iran is a bad actor. I feel like instinctively right. we all know that. So why has Washington let Iran get so influential in the region and putting our own U.S. interests at risk? It makes no sense, doctor. You're 100 percent correct, Todd, because of the appeasement policies that have driven this administration uh, to appease and play with this regime. Remember, this regime is led by a so-called president who was a part of the death panel that ordered over 30,000 young people. Half of my classmates at University of Tehran were executed or missing. And that was led by Ebrahim Raisi, the so-called president of today's uh, Iran. And, Todd, this is in the view of the fact that there is a bipartisan support uh, for the lead opposition group, led by Mrs. Rajavi, who has presented the 10-point plans for a non-nuclear, non-violent Iran uh, with the, all the elements that we have here in our own uh, constitution. And I carry a bucket of constitution, U.S. constitution, in my pocket. And there's a bipartisan support that actually we will hear today in the Congress. There's a hearing, as you mentioned, uh, for, the, for this support. I think the time has arrived. Uh, for us, as Americans, and for this administration to stand with the opposition of Iran. As you know, since 2022, the revolution has started leading by women, by youth, to go for their support. And the vote of the American, the Iranian people is very clear. Unanimously, they want a regime change in Iran. And it is time for us and our policymakers, our administration, to stand with Iran and to stop appeasing this barbaric and a regime that is trying to use all the tools that he has, including supporting Hamas and, you know, creating more tension by its proxies in the Middle East to get us engaged and sends us a message of fear. Regime change is not an instantaneous thing. That does take time. What steps can we take starting today, doctor, to just stop the attacks on our U.S. troops? It seems like that's step one. Um, uh, Todd, as you remember, this administration gave $6 billion uh, as, a, as a bribe to this regime. I think a standing firm with the Iranian opposition, is standing firm with the Iranian uh, revolution, is the, both the short-term and long-term vision. 
The Iranian people are ready to overthrow this regime. All this administration has to do to stop appeasing with them and enforcing the sanctions. Uh, since the President Trump left the office, the sale of the oil by this regime has gone through the roof, because Biden administration does not enforce the, uh, the sanctions. Our number one chance is to support Iranian people to take down this regime by its mean by its main opposition group that are in Albania now. And the regime, by this sham court system that is setting up, is trying to justify or hijack our legal system. This is a regime that doesn't even understand what the rule of law is. They're trying to hijack this system to send a message that the opposition is not going to be saving right. Europe. And uh, that is, I think, our both short-term and long-term action plan. Well, you mentioned it's bipartisan, but none of this matters unless the president of the United States, this Biden administration, gets on board and stops with its hands-off lax approach to Iran. They've shown no proclivity to doing so. Hopefully, your words today will lead them down the path of logic. Firush, Dennis Gary, we thank you for your time. Thank Thanks, you doctor. so much, Doc. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.